bringing you news with the voice of reason. You're listening to The Hawk Report. One of the common objections to America being invaded in, in the Ezekiel account is we are not Israel, we're told. So who are the camp of the saints of Revelation 20 verse 9? They certainly can't be the Jews or anyone Antichrist, as I uh, said in the last video. Um, he who uh, rejects him is uh, condemned already. It's not like they'll have to be condemned in the future after they see a sign or, uh, you know, that religio scientific eschatology I mentioned. So, who are the camp of the saints of Revelation 20, verse 9, that play a key role in this Gog and Magog? Incursion. We hear invasion. I, I think it's uh, it's both. It's multifaceted. Faceted. Well, there is a uh, first. There is a progression of uh, prophetic events that were needed for us to arrive to the conclusion that America is the camp of the saints of Revelation 20, verse 9. Those who understand proper preterism probably know that the know those progression of events. Um, I'm going to go fast here, so. Pause and rewind if you need to, because this is important information. Uh, it is my considered opinion and careful research of about 10 years, unbiased research, research I will add, I'm about the most um, unconventional, unorthodox thinker, but I am, I, I, I do believe that uh, God has given me discernment. I seen these things about 10 years ago before this current invasion of the of Europe, the European West, and uh, also the American West, just the Christian West altogether, this uh, invasion that is turning in, that uh, looks like it's turning into a surrounding now. So, uh, it is my considered opinion that the Camp of the Saints, as me mentioned in Revelation 20, verse 9, is the Christian West or the United States of America, because the Camp of the Saints is localized. If you parallel both Ezekiel accounts, it has the fire comes down on a specific region with those uh, multitudes of pagan hordes. Um, so um, I think it's the Christian West or the United States of America that is currently involved in a border war. And I think it is no coincidence that everyone seems to want to move here because of the apparent blessings and prosperity God has bestowed upon us. Um, <clears throat> between the years of uh, 1620 and 1900, uh, most Christians from the British Isles, Europe, and around the world came to camp and especially uh, uh, create new homes while they were braving the cold, taming the wilderness in America, the new land of Christian freedom. They did this in faith in spite of the many dangers they faced, the dreaded ocean, wild animals, fierce weather conditions, and above all, evil men they would run into. Upon their arrival and settling in, many of the cities in America were named biblical names like Salem for Jerusalem, Zion, Bethlehem, and others. The Europeans who first traveled to America to form what would become the USA while escaping religious persecution and tyranny, said they were coming here to advance the new Jerusalem on earth to please God. America would soon become the world's largest Christian population of any nation, as it is today, and their fruits for many years proved this, making America the richest and greatest superpower in the world. In fact, there are two major reasons why we have our modern world today. One, the printing press invented in uh, the Christian West Europe, and two, America, the USA, with its liberties and its uh, past mass productions, infrastructures, and rule and rule of law. Upon uh, building their infrastructure of law, America became confident and dwelling safely, like the Ezekiel account says in 3811. And, and you have said, I go up against, this is this uh, Gog, these Gog and Magog hordes, I go up against a land of unwalled villages. I go in to those at rest, dwelling confidently. All of them are dwelling without walls 
and bars and gates they have not. To take the spoil and to take the prey, to turn thine hand against the waste places that are now inhabited and against the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the middle of the land. And America, uh, America has an abundance of cattle with its um, prosperous farmlands. America is also in the middle, middle of the land between Canada and Mexico. The other Christian West Europe still under tyranny that has, they, they've even lost their freedom of speech now in uh, many respects, is now they're actually more invaded than America with foreigners who do, who do not have their best interest at heart and have succumbed to the unbiblical pseudo values being pushed today by leftists who are on the, the brink of complete socialism that uh, that focuses on racism, gender, and and uh, silencing um, silencing dissent. America right now is the only land of liberty that is uh, protected by the freedom of uh, speech, first First Amendment. These are uh, these are reasons I th I uh, pick and think America spiritually fits over Europe as the camp of the saints in Revelation twenty verse nine. Um, we've witnessed this more than ever since President Donald Trump. God seems to have stepped in to protect America in a way he has not granted the uh, same uh, preservation to, say, Britain or Germany, the other Christian West we call Europe, that he has the USA, which further leads, <clears throat> leads me to believe America is the, uh, the protected camp of the saints. Europe has not been protected from this. When, um, when Donald Trump went on the attack of the fake Antichrist media, news media and started uh, restoring our religious liberties and building our southern border, uh, or building the wall, which there is a war on our southern border, I knew this to be all the more true. Eventually, eventually it says God will really step in and send down fire from heaven to protect this camp of the saints against the uh, invading pagan hordes. It says... Um, in Revelation 29, verse 9, And they went up over the breadth of the earth, or land, encompassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire descended from God out of heaven and devoured them. Which uh, parallels the Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39 account. Uh, this propels the camp of the saints to advance the largest cleanup of dead bodies in history. That's why I think it's real fire. Ezekiel 39, especially verse 6, which is really the only thing these multitudes of pagan hordes would understand. They're not, you're not going to reason with them. But for the meantime, America, not as much as the European Christian West, is invaded, Gog and Magog, and under judgment for a little while, Revelation 20, verse 3. And that's part of the progression of, of events that led us to this, because we believe that, um, or we think that um, uh, Satan was released from his prison out of the abyss for a little little season in uh, circa 1948. We always say circa around because we don't like giving dates, but the proof is in the pudding. Um, uh, no one said America is perfect, but uh, do you have a better candidate for the camp, camp of the Saints? I think we should be talking about these things. Also, I'll add that um, the late D. James Kennedy, a very... Uh, um, a very intelligent thinker said, and I'm paraphrasing, <clears throat> God gave uh, America to the Christians, or um, God made America a Christian nation, rather, or it never could have been one. Now, if Satan, our adversary, was released circa 1948, then that means that we think that Satan, the adversary, was bound at the destruction of Jerusalem, circa 70. And um, here's some reasoning for that. And this is to, this is to the full preterist. Listen carefully, re rewind and repeat, because every time I talk to one of them about this, they make me repeat myself like five times and they don't listen. They mock, they scoff. But listen to this. Daniel 2.35, then was the iron, Rome, the clay, Judah or Jerusalem, the brass, Greece had maintained a particularly close association with bronze that extended into the post-Alexander Hellenic Age, the silver, Persian Empire, Cyrus the Great, and the gold, Babylon, broken pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer th threshing floor, and the wind carried them away so that no place was found for them 
in the stone that the board that brought and this brought the fifth kingdom of Christ that smote the image hit the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth when the stone Jesus Christ struck the kingdoms of men the statue of Daniel 2 his kingdom was inaugurated and began the process of growing into this great mountain but it did not strike the statue of Daniel 2 until his return in judgment circa 70 AD when he struck the feet of iron and clay showing again a premillennial return of Christ and by the way this is the time when adversary was bound there is no other advers uh, other adversary no imaginary uh, fallen being uh, we have debunked this look at our book two the gold book at the Christian Myth Mythbuster series dot com and, but, and, and this identifies what that adversary was bound at the same time that Christ and his saints reign. I am simply saying that the mountain, Christ's kingdom, does not grow with resurrected saints until Judah is struck down and the kingdom of Judah was not struck down in 30 or 40 AD, um, showing the error in a pre-70,000 years, uh, full preterists. Judah was not struck down until 70 Full preterism says the mountain was growing, saints were being raised before Jerusalem was destroyed. Since resurrection is part and parcel to the thousand years, they have a, a post-millennial return of Christ that does not agree with Daniel 2.35. Um, uh, Christ's return is always pre-millennial. In other words, um, Christ returns, then the thousand years begins, even, uh, even in the Old Testament. The Daniel verse... The Daniel verses say his kingdom is without end does not affect what I am saying because we are determining when the thousand years or the saints with, with Christ began their reign. The beginning of that reign so its length does not negate when the reign begins. Pay, pay close attention to when the throne verses are applied in scripture. Matthew 19, 27 and 28. Then answered Peter and said to him, Lo, we have left all and followed you. What shall we have? And Jesus said to them, Verily I say to you that you who have followed me in the regeneration... A resurrection when the son of man shall sit on the throne of his glory you also shall sit upon 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel here we see the same thing they were awaiting to be seated on thrones with christ reigning revelation 3 21 he that overcomes i will give to him to sit down with me in my throne as i also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne so he he sat down with his father in his throne and he's promising them that he will uh, that they that overcome will sit with him in his throne in the future from when Revelation was written. Several other passages state that Jesus would sit on his throne with the saints at the time of his second coming in judgment and in his kingdom. This would also be the time of resurrection. Please note the ones uh, who reigned with him were martyred by the beast power. Revelation 20 verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and such as worship not the beast, neither his image, and receive not the mark upon their forehead, upon their hand, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So if the saints did not reign until the coming, uh, circa 70, uh, that changes the different millennial paradigms offered up. And what, what does it do to the rest of Revelation? So, um, besides Revelation 20, verse 4, several other passages state that Jesus would not sit on his throne with the saints at the time of his coming in judgment. Um, or he would sit on his throne with, with the saints at the time of his coming in judgment and in his kingdom. Uh, these include Daniel 7, chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, and 7, 23 through 7, Matthew 19, 27 through 28, and 25, verse 31, and Revelation 3, 21, we just read. These passages show that before the saints on thrones, well, sat on, on thrones to judge, Christ returned in judgment, the beast was defeated, full preterist, the beast was defeated by the time they sat on thrones with Christ to reign. The resurrection took place and the saints inherited the kingdom. Sitting on thrones marked the beginning of the thousand years according to Revelation 20 verse 4. This fits the timeline of AD 70, but not the time of AD 30. Uh, this, along with many other proofs, debunks the 40-year millennial of full preterism. Um, if you are interested in letting Scripture correct you as I am, many other proofs, especially when one understands the meaning of, of the ominous abyss that takes up about one-third of the revolution, Revelation uh, chapters, also proves Satan was bound, not loosed until circa 70 A.D.